Puerto Rican vegan musician socialist says Keffels defends a transphobic lib but attacks Benny, huh? Oh, you have no idea. You have no idea. Hey, Jama. Glad you liked it. New cardigan? I mean, it's my newest cardigan. I've had this for, uh, I've had this since last year, I think. We have the... This is the temp... This is the cardigan I wear when it's, uh too warm indoors, and also because the one I really want to wear was accidentally thrown in the wash and it's soaking wet, so... Alas. Oh, guys. The stupid Reddit article? You have no idea. You have no idea what we're looking at tonight. Oh, God. Hair's working, too? It's debatable, but thank you. I mean, it's there, so, you know, count your blessings. This talk with Wick is probably going to suck. Nah, I think it'll be fine. I'm feeling rather good tonight, actually. I 
I think me and Wick are going to get along going forward just swimmingly. Keffel's stream background has been accused of being right wing. I think that's stolen valor from Sunday's stream background. But I've got books in the background. Just accept the refine. Fine, I'll accept it. Maybe a little bit late, but that's okay. We've got uh, we've got time. We're gonna go for a little bit tonight. Not crazy long. I'm not that kind of streamer, but long enough. It'll feel long by the time we're done. That's what I'll say. What's the worst that could happen with Wick? Oh, I invited him on, didn't I? Oh, you like the front wave? Okay, I'll take it. Thank you. Theory meter, there's no theory meter tonight. This is, tonight is praxis. Tonight is the, uh, tonight is the part of politics that hurts. Wick will be ready in 10. Oh, frap just a kalukale. Now we wait. Drop the leaks. Oh, we're not dropping anything. We are... We are taking a guided tour. It's still going on, by the way? Yeah, I know. Theory to save you now, correct? It's true, it is the polis part. Hey, in some you are. Lots of erudite and brandy who hate streams at the same time. What? What's the uh, not-so-erudite hate stream? This isn't a hate stream. This brings me no joy. I mean, I'm in a good mood, don't get me wrong. Um, God is clearly on my side, but... About what we're about to embark upon, I, I am not looking forward to this. At least the better part of me isn't. What are the chances PS uses Irish cream in his coffee? They're not zero, but alas. I wish I had Irish cream tonight. I wish I had something, God. But I need to be on it. Tonight this is not this is not a night for bravado bravado. This is a night for This is a night for precision. By the way, after tonight, after a few days, on the uh, 30th, I believe, unless something disastrous happens. Um, we are, uh, we are going to be discussing the aforementioned and relevant issues, um, with Jelma Bayorn on stream. A lot of you have asked for him to come back on, and, uh, don't say I never do anything for you. Does hating on people typically bring you joy someday? Nope. Believe it or not, I actually like being friendly with people. Usually when people reach out privately and they're decent, I'm very decent back. Alas. Alas. Hair looks nice today, thank you. Disagree, but thank you.
I have coffee and lies of P. What's lies of P? What's this about Brianna Wu and Leek? So you shall see. Patience. Patience. Ah, six minutes till Wick. Oh, you. St oh, right. You have COVID, Brooks. I forgot. Damn. Is your sense of taste back at least? Correct, Black Fox. Yes. Oh, what's this? Let's see here. Ha 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 Tom. Tom Foolery is sniping my audience. How dare you, sir? I see you. I know what you're doing. Tom, you better raid into me after this. Actually, who, who the hell am I kidding? You stream way longer than I do. Okay, let's warm this place up a little bit. <sighs> we wait. We wait for the Hobbit. Come on. On, damn you! Oh, I see it's on energy savings. So turn that off, and then... There we go. Sweet. Is Brianna Wu a transphobe? More than you'd think. More than you'd think. Oh, Wick's live? Oh, he's taking time setting up a stream. Oh, of course he's setting up a stream. Alright. I see how it is. It shouldn't be too crazy long anyways. Alright. We're going to need to pop on our virtual cameras so we can appear over there. It is time. No worries, take your time. It's all good. How are you, by the way? Yeah, you, uh, you bumped time back, and so it's coming a little long. Now it's on there, it's super fake back. No, it's all good. Uh, just a heads up, your audio is a little, uh, hmm? bad. How so? Uh, it's, it's like it's not detecting you very clearly. You sound kind of uh, tinny. Give me, give me one second. It's a little bit better now. 
Maybe it just takes time to get rolling or something. I don't know. <clears throat> Okay, so I got us both on the screen here. Make it so they can see us. Okay. Mm hmm. You doing okay? Oh, I'm doing swell, thank you. So you had some problems with my decision here. No. Nope. What are your issues? I have none. I have no problems at all. It's entirely within your prerogative to ban members okay. of your server for whatever reason. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to yell about it to me, because I saw you yelling about it on stream. I didn't really bother to catch it, so... Nothing like yelling about it. It's it's really simple, right? Hmm. Um, the people in my community did not sign up to be content. And so when you, again, without them coming on to the stream directly, hmm. yeah. and you are simply recording my general chat and then making videos about that, hmm. yeah, I crossed the line. I asked you to take it down. You did not take it down, nope. so you caught a ban for it. Simple. That is that is perfectly fair. I think actually technically just a six day timeout. Yes. Uh, seven days. Seven so. days, huh? Whoa, mm -hmm. why not? damn. A week on the yeah. seventh day, right? That's generous. Thank you. You didn't have to do that. Your your rules allow you to ban me. You don't need to follow your. I I trust me. If you do it again, it won't be it won't be just seven days. <laughs> oh. Um. Oh, look, no. That's not it, this is biblical. this is uh, at the end of the day. This is it's it's, it's really simple, right? Um. I want my people, uh, the people who come in my server, not to feel like they're on stage all mm. the time. It is substantively different. Discord, my Discord is substantively different from Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, all these other places, uh, because it's an invite-based system, and I have control over who has access and who does not. And if someone violates those rules, I remove that access. I didn't get invited. Um, I joined. Hmm? I didn't get invited. I joined. It was a public thing. I, I make the I invite public, but you still have to react to the rules, and we still have the ability to remove you if you break them. Whereas sure. on Twitter, I don't have that. Yeah. I don't have that ability. It's public in a way that uh, Discord's communities are. No, no, I, I, I respect that. You you run your you run your Discord mm -hmm. the way you like it, and I have, I have no mm -hmm. objections to that whatsoever. I did have okay. a question. I did have a question though for you though. Well, let me um, turn you up a bit. Yeah, please. What uh? What made you decide on seven days? Seven days. Well, yeah. the first time you got banned or timed out, you got timed out for like I think a a day or three days. Yeah. An escalation. Escalation. That was an escalation. What was three I days. What was I banned? What was I banned? Time, what was I banned for initially? It was the same thing, wasn't it? Something very similar. I uh, I'd have to bring up the account. Oh no 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 no! It's because I was responding to Brianna Wu, but you interpreted that as a uh, skirting Twitter's, my, my mods Twitter's did. blocking. I didn't, I didn't make that decision. My okay. mods did. Okay, fair enough. Um, when uh when Doe informed me that Sulfur was spreading my docs around, why did she get three days for that? When your rules say that she should be banned. Because I talked to Sulfur, and there were uh, mitigating circumstances, and what that was. And I don't think it, it met the criteria of a full ban. So I exercised leniency and mercy. And I gave her three days. You didn't think... Uh, she you didn't think, she, you she didn't think repented doxing. and she has not done it since, to my knowledge. She didn't repent to me. That's fine. So like, you, you think you I can't think make doxing. her be sorry for what she did. Okay. But she, uh, by repent, she stopped doing it. And that's what I care about at the end of the day. She stopped engaging in the behavior. Just like, again, after these seven days, if you no longer record my Discord and put it in public, then, yeah, no no, no problem. Well, Godspeed. Let's hope, let's hope, let's hope that happens, because I, I like your Discord, Wick. Oh, my Discord is the source of most of my angst and, and frustration in this really? space. If I get in trouble, it's because of my Discord. So, hmm. It's always a fight. But, uh, is that what you uh, wanted to talk about? I mean, this could be. A oh, very that, I, I, I didn't, I didn't really necessarily want to talk about anything. I just wanted to. You invited me on your stream. Dude. I wanted you to. I wanted to. I, I wanted to hey, give you. Wick, I you wanted want to, to come give on you, and talk yeah, about this. I, I wanted to. Okay. I'm being. I'm being kind. I wanted you to get a little. You know, a little bit of the little cut of the content tonight. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> have a good night, Wick. Take care. <laughs> okay. Have a. 
All right. <sighs> now, turn the virtual camera off. So, I guess to begin, let's um, let's look at that recording. That was a little slow. Oh, all right. So this is essentially by way of preamble. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm just going to put it on the screen, and I'm going to... I'm going to hide myself behind it. There we go. Can you all hear me? That should be working fine. So this is, uh, as you've probably determined already, this is the conversation that was recorded from uh, Discord. And I'm going to explain why I recorded it as we go and why it matters. Um, this is not what we're getting into tonight. This is just the preamble. Uh, so we were discussing uh, pronouns. Somehow it had come up that Do uses it its pronouns. Some people understandably found that a little strange. I can, I used to too. I am, I am not unsympathetic to this. So there's a conversation going on. They're not an object. Why are they using it its pronouns? Da -da 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 -da. Comparing it to the N word. Um, when we go down a little bit more, let's see. So we have. Uh, uh, do -do 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 -do. We have, here we go, we have this Jenny Burns person, um, and yet it's it's preferred pronouns, that's not up to you, responding to the uh, person saying they would never refer to someone as it, it's. Um, do, 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 do. I make joke. And it's coming up. I try to avoid talking about the trans issues because I'm not well read on them and would need to research in many fields. In some you are is going to be a protagonist of this conversation. Says not being well researched on a topic hasn't stopped you before. And at a certain point, I jump in. I jump in about the names do not stand out, do they? Let's see. Um So Brianna Wu starts laughing, she comes in lol. And I reply to somebody who's characterized it, its pronouns as objectifying yourself. It's not objectifying yourself, the purpose isn't to reduce oneself to an object, but to remove oneself from the gender binary. That this resolves most efficiently into it, its, shows how limiting, limiting our received gender categorizations are. You're either a penis or vagina bearer, or you're literally a thing. Um, the Gnostic says, uh, again, someone could be, uh, could refer to be referred to as dog shit. Not going to do that. And some new replies, this is a distraction from the issue. You won't call someone it, it's no one has suggested you call someone dog shit. And now Brianna Wu comes in with a hot take. And, uh, Jenny Burns clarifies, listen, as much as I think PS is being a dick, um, to be fair, I am known for this. Uh, this is literally all it is, just respecting that the person has chosen to reside outside the gender binary and chooses the pronouns it feels fits them best. And Brianna Wu comes in with her hot take finally after a delay. Quote, Every second the discussion about transgender people is about anything but civil rights in the form of public policy is a second the conversation is not serving the community's needs, which are serious and important. Recall, at this point, we're talking about whether or not it, its pronouns are essentially part of a degradation fetish. This will come into play later. And Somnior replies, Actually, recognizing them as valid people, including recognizing their identity, is important. And will responds. I don't know a single trans person that feels this discourse, which is overwhelmingly led by cis people, is actually helping the community. So I took issue with this for reasons I'm not going to relitigate. We've already been over this uh, ad nauseum. Um, I made uh, a post on uh, the Vosh Reddit, uh, I think 
fairly reasonably outlining my issues. I'll go over that very briefly. Um, that's been now taken down three times. I am not pleased about this. Um, I did abide by the rules. Uh, the first time it was taken down ostensibly, here, let me pull it up from, actually, I think I can reach it from Twitter. So let's see. Da, 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 da. God, I've been tweeting a lot tonight. Okay. Here we go. So this is the, this is the removed tweet. Or not the removed tweet. This is the removed uh, post. Now this was removed three times. Uh, the first time was because I misunderstood the rule about posting about Destiny. Uh, Tayana explained that one. Um, it was very popular though. I think it hit like 77 upvotes before they took it down. Um, uh, I, I had referred to Destiny as a uh, blue gremlin or a blue-haired gremlin. And that's apparently also against the rules. So I went through the post entirely and I removed any reference to Destiny whatsoever. So this is the corrected version. Um, hello everyone. Uh, sorry, the thing is why I have been criticizing Brandavu. And I made this post because somebody else had posted on the Vosh Reddit. Um, has anybody seen Sunday going after Wu recently? And Wu was actually in uh, those comments. In fact, it, it kind of uh, it kind of bears going into. Um, the comments are now deleted. But um, yeah, here we go. The comments are now deleted. I've taken issue, and we'll go into this in the article. I've uh, taken issue with Brianna Wu, essentially whitewashing the reputations of, uh, or trying to whitewash the reputations of transphobes uh, to her audience. Which includes counterpoints. Counterpoints uh, referred to Doe's identity as pathological directly to me in on stream. Uh, that stream is still on my channel. But uh, Space Cat Gal here, this is Brianna Wu. She goes by Space Cat Gal on Steam as her developer title. Um, I think her company of memory serves is called Giant Space Cat. But this is this is what happened. So this person card called uh, Far Scallion says Counterpoints is a right wing lunatic who shouts conspiracy theories and transphobia. Seeing as Brianna condemned anyone who bought Hogwarts as Hogwarts Legacy as transphobic or morally corrupt, it's extremely hypocritical of her to now collaborate with them so they can both profit. Brianna replies, I'm doing a show with counterpoints because I disagree with him on lots of stuff, including his trans takes. If I agreed with him, you'd have something. I specifically am there to fight him on it. Barskelling replies, you're not doing a show with him to argue, you're doing it to create content. I would disagree a little bit, I think these are both... These are not contradictory, which is whatever. Just keep it in mind the next time you go shaming people for financially supporting transphobes. Space Skekel, or Brianna, replies, You know, believe it or not, I do things because I think they're helpful. I don't really need the money from streaming. I understand why you're used to people farming content, though. I think there's a lot more evidence Sunday does this than I do. And I think it's really clear he hates women. See there at the bottom. So... This is my article. Um, hello everyone. Someone has posted about my aggressive criticisms of Brianna Wu. I consider a good part of this community my own. I have a lot of appreciation for the people here, and over the years I've developed an admiration for Vosh as a person, who despite his flaws and our strong disagreements, has engaged with me in nothing but good faith. In light of that, given the relationship Brianna has fostered with this space, I'd like to provide an explanation. The screenshot at the bottom of the page, that is a screenshot of what we just observed a moment ago, uh, the screenshot at the bottom of the page is of Brianna Wu responding to someone arguing that non-binary people matter and respecting their identities is important. Wu responds by dismissing this. Sorry, Wu, Wu responds, Wu dismisses this as a, that's an error. Wu dismisses this saying the people who care about non-binary identities are largely disingenuous cis people. Wu has also gone out of her way to whitewash the reputations of creators like Counterpoints and Destiny, but I removed that section, with whom Wu is currently collaborating in a joint media project, who has specifically mentioned Doe, a non-binary person, and a much appreciated positive presence in this community, as an example of someone whose identity is the product of mental illness in particular. I have additionally been made aware that Wu has elsewhere been aggressively promoting the idea that advocating for non-binary people, a large subset of the trans community, is bad politics and will result in an, uh, in an optical loss, dear God, these typos, in an optical, I shouldn't edit on uh, my phone, in an optical loss for progressives in electoral politics. This not only demonstrates to me that Wu regards non-binary people as at best irrelevant, 
it is an attitude that can only work against the trans community's interests. This is what will happen if we follow Brianna Wu's advice and dismiss trans people whose identities might be uncomfortable to a large part of the electorate. First, uh, abandoning adv advocacy for some subsets of the trans community on the grounds that they are too alien or uncomfortable for the average voter to sympathize with will set a precedent for carving off parts of the community for the sake of popular appeal. Second, this will result in fractures within the trans community as advocacy for certain subsets is deemed politically non-viable and anyone with an identity outside of trans man or trans woman, possibly with medicalist criteria defining each, no longer has their interests represented by the whole. Third, these groups will then have their respective interests formally opposed and given the populist nature of the strategy, the more numerous will win. Fourth, these non-viable groups will then cease to be represented in the community and will be massively demoralized. Eventually, many of these will start to disengage, resulting in an overall shrinking of the size and density of the trans community as it becomes more exclusionary. Fifth, this will have no effect, however, on the economic security of large media representatives of the trans community. However, the shrinking of that community will result in growth stagnation. Their audiences, desperate for representation, won't move on to other channels, but those audiences won't grow either. Sixth, this will create serious financial incentive for trans representatives to curate their content to appeal to other audiences in order to grow. And then finally, seventh, if these trans representatives are successful in this, the trans audience will begin to shrink to a minority status within the overall audience of those media figures who were once the representatives. And these former representatives may even disavow them altogether if they become unpopular enough. On a more particular, but possibly even more dangerous note, I would say the most dangerous note, uh, who, Br uh, who Brianna has advocated we cut out of our concerns is in fact no small minority of trans people. Non-binary doesn't just refer to people with strange pronouns and non-human identities, and I can understand why these would make someone raise their eyebrows. Non-binary identities involve a rejection of the sex binary as determinant of the range of gender expressions possible in human society. The position which denies the validity of non-binary identities does so on the basis of insisting that the sex binary strictly limit the number of possible gender expressions. In short, baked into this logic, which may seem to the naive so pragmatic and shrewd, is a tacit gender essentialism that will guarantee that when the chips are down, the only trans people who are actually non-expendable are the ones a rigid transmedicalist would admit. So in conclusion, when it comes to politics, I, President Sunday, am very much a pragmatist of the whoever isn't against us is for us school of thought. I recognize that not everybody who represents uh, progressive left-wing goals in politics is going to be perfect. The issue I have with Brianna Wu is not that I have disagreements with her politically or am bitter at who she's friends with. The problem I have with Brianna Wu is that while she pretends to be the friend and ally of the trans community, she provides resources and propagandistic cover to people who would have a huge proportion of of that community hung out to dry as freaks who aren't worth advocating for. This means that when she rambles about how important these issues are for her and how much she'll fight to win, it's not your victory she's actually invested in because it doesn't hurt her if the trans community loses. Brianna Wu has an escape hatch in the company of people like Destiny and TYT. She can be one of the good ones, quote unquote, and she gets to be famous either way. Now, Brianna Wu may be useful as an in with more mainstream programming, and that should be taken advantage of. There are no points for purity in politics. What I care about is the result. But the result Brianna seeks is not the progressives winning, but her being a main character on the political scene. She is not your friend. She proves by her actions that you are nothing to her but a stepping stone to becoming famous herself. That's why she's directly supporting people who want you erased. And that's why, despite not one year ago preaching that buying Hogwarts Legacy is a test of character, she is now putting hard cash in the hands of the bigots who want you gone. What Brianna Wu is advocating poses a real danger to a big part of this community if it gets uptake by community leaders. I don't think it's good that we let people buy their way into compromising on the values that define us against our enemies. We don't abandon the people on our side. That's what separates us from the right and makes it worth it to keep going, even when we're at our worst. Even if we could win by cutting off, dis by uh, discarding members of the community that are, uh, let's say, 
optically complicated. And as I think I've argued fairly well, um, we wouldn't win even if we did that, if, even if we did do that. In fact, we would lose partially because of that. The thing that would end up winning if we did would not really be us anymore. It wouldn't really be the left. It would just be a milder form of the reactionary politics that we're fighting against, and it would slide increasingly in that direction. So I conclude, thank you for hearing me out. Best, P.S. And that's that. And that got removed three times. Um, the uh, the latter time it was removed was was not. The reason given was was strange, um, as you can see here in the uh, top comment. Your post was removed for multiple rule violations. Rule three: no excessive personal attacks, and rule four: act in good faith. Um, given that Brianna Wu has uh, directly <laughs> referred on this. Uh, on this server, on this subreddit, to me as someone who just hates women, she's done this in multiple places, I leave you, dear audience, to judge whether or not I have engaged in good faith or in excessive personal attacks. That's the stuff you do know. Here's the stuff you don't know. So, Brianna Wu... Brianna Wu said something rather interesting today, in response to my article, indirectly. Let me pull this up. Here it is. I just wanted to put on the record that I unequivocally support non-binary people and anyone that says otherwise is lying for clout. There's also her appearance on Chill Logic Stream. Well, that's fine. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll look at that later if that's worth it, but I think, I think we're covered for tonight. So again, I unequivocally support non-binary people and anyone that says otherwise is lying for clout. Dear friends, tonight I'm going to prove by Brianna Wu's own metrics that she is definitively lying for clout and quite a few other things. Quite a few other significantly worse things, actually. Um, because uh, fortune has smiled on us tonight, and somebody who is in a position to see things that most people can't shared some things with me. And I've learned a few things about how Brianna actually is, and I have to say... I didn't realize she was this bad. I was kinder to her than I ought have been. I have been more generous to Brianna Wu than she deserves. This is, uh, this is gonna hurt. Brianna Wu is part of a group chat a trans medicalist group chat, um, in which she speaks candidly about these things. Much more candidly than you would expect. Uh, this is because Brianna Wu is an idiot. Um, she legitimately believes she legitimately believes that when she has convinced someone to be on her side, that they are on her side forever. I'm going to show you. This is bigger than just... <laughs> this is worse than just her not supporting non-binary people. We're going to start with something big enough. I, I'm going to be honest with you, like, it's, I'm nervous to put this on the screen. Here we go. Brianna, I don't actually hate you, but you need to go. These are stills from the group chat. Out of order. Let me uh, 
let me reorder that. We want a different one first. So that's interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this one. And that ruined the whole uh, that ruined the whole flow of this. Okay, here we go. I think this should work now. There we go. Brilliant. You remember Benny, right? Benny's Benny hasn't been doing too hot lately. She's had a she's been making some gaffes. Not like this though. This is the Sissy Hippo Pub, apparently. This is Cactus. Some of you may know Cactus. It puts the lotion on his skin. Her dress reminds me of those god-awful skirts that femboys buy. Please, says Olivet Venom. And then Brianna Wu here. God. Oh, I guess we'll have to... Uh... You know what? Screw it. We'll just reset the transformation. I thought that was going to be all neat. I'd have it like nice and orderly, but okay. Her dress reminds me of those god-awful skirts that femboys buy. Please, God, no. I mean, if you're not super hot, maybe just dress normally and don't present yourself as a transvestite. You can go a long way with just being skinny and dressing normally. This is Brianna Wu. Responding to a photo on Twitter of Benny from the Young Turks, formerly of the Young Turks. I am using MS Paint. What, what kind of technological mastermind do you think I am? Oh, this is going... This is going bad. Cactus replies, I would be more okay with non-binaries if they wouldn't co-op my medical condition. They're not real, can we just admit that? It's depressing how many trans spaces I'm not allowed in because I have wrong think. Brandon Wu, to her credit, NB people are obviously real. It says that they are in the same SOC we used to transition. Now what's interesting is I think this is actually out of order. Here we go, this is where it continues. Right, so I mean if you're... The, the person who sent them did not send them in order, so we're going to have to figure it out a little bit as we go. So she says in response to, uh, once again, this picture of Benny from the Young Turks. I mean, if you're not super hot, maybe just dress normally and don't present yourself as a transvestite. You can go a long way with just being skinny and dressing normally. Especially if you're a lank monster. It's okay to dress like a lesbian. Da -da 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 -da. And then she says... People like Benny honestly disgust me aesthetically, ethically, politically, top to bottom. Just dreadful. Now, I'm going to put this as delicately as I can, Brianna, because I do have standards. If I were you, if I was going to wade into the arena of insulting people on the basis of their personal appearance, I would tread lightly. Top to bottom, just dreadful. Imagine giving up a gig as a political commentator with a legit news organization to go and LARP as a Twitter communist posting cringy 2017 tra-tier shit. I don't know what that means. But that's true. Like, uh, Benny's, Benny's been um, absolutely falling apart online recently. The, uh, the Stalin defenses are not doing her any good. Not, not, a, not a smart cookie. But then she says, can I ask you a real question? Yeah, go for it. Benny talks about learning she was trans on Facebook, looking at what advertisers thought she was. I cannot imagine this. When did y'all know? So I think... I think we go here. God, the ordering of this is so bad. When did y'all know?
we might have a gap there that's possible but that's fine so i think it ends there for that section i think we're going to come back to that in the next section i think we have uh we have a lot more that sort of loops a little bit as we go forward um that's jenny matrix who said that last thing by the way that wasn't woo the uh the gig thing So here we go. Oh, I think this is it actually. Like obviously you're getting a lot of very gy auto gynophilic ads. You have a condition, but I can't imagine basing such a huge life decision on what an advertisement platform thought I was or else I'd be in cooking class and buying a German vehicle right now. I always knew, but y'all are actual transsexuals. That's woo. I always knew, but y'all are actual transsexuals. Did you know early on or am I being too hard? And the German vehicle, which is only, is only uh, from me breaking down and Googling what Porsches were, which is because of you, Brian. Okay, it's great. Um, it isn't really a descriptive term, but a political identity, and its objective is to turn gender into a matter of pure individualism. How do you square that with those same academics doing things like WPATH? It proposes that gender is really just a matter of self-identification, which should be uncoupled from the biological reality it came from. Did Marxist feminists found WPATH? Perhaps they did. I've never looked into it. And uh, I think Wu provides this article here. Then we have the battle over, I don't know what that is, gender or something. Found, no, but they are involved, and they are not always as helpful. They aren't always helpful as illustrated above. It's a very long article. Can I get a TLDR on the relevant parts? Sure. Marxists within WPATH threw a fit about compromising, namely. It's been a while since I read it, but it's basically the tension between the fact that a lot of trans stuff is under-researched. There's a whole chapter in the and the uh, SIC for uh, non-binary people, apparently. SOC. In the SOC. Uh, Jenny says, I'm not really sure what this has to do with my point, to be honest. And then we have the article here. Gender nonconformity refers to the extent to which a person's gender identity, role, or expression differs from the cultural norms prescribed for people of a particular sex. Gender dysphoria refers to discomfort or distress that is caused by a discrepancy between a person's gender identity and that person's sex assigned at birth and the associated gender role and or primary and secondary sex characteristics. Only some gender nonconforming people experience gender dysphoria at some point in their lives. Treatment is available to assist people with such distress to explore the gender identity and find a gender role that is comfortable for them. Now, she interprets this in a rather strange way. So she says, you were criticizing academics and I was pointing out that it was the researches at WPATH and Benjamin's before that helped medicalize transsexualism. Didn't WPATH add Unix and Neo pronoun bullshit? Not that I can see. Academia isn't a monolith and I'm not claiming it is. Uh, fair enough. The point I was making is that the Tumblrite stuff you see today can be traced back directly to the gender theory of the 1990s put forward by the likes of Marxists like Feinberg. So that's all very boring. That's that's pretty boring. Um, this is this is page one. There's a reason why we're looking at this first. Uh, I mean, I would. Oh, here we go. So she says, uh, non-binary people inserted sort of into the middle here. Non-binary people are obviously real. This is referring to this one here, right? Of course. So this person says non-binary people are not real. Can we just admit that? Da -da -da -da. And then Wu replies, to her credit, non-binary people are obviously real. It says they are in the same SOC we use to transition. What's not clear is the best course of action. Uh, uh, what's, not, what's not clear is what the best course of action are for them. I mean, is for them. The same SOC says they need to discover a gender role that fits them. I'm not sure how to square that with a mission which is basically abolish gender. And I think they are two pages out of a 120 page document, which makes them grabbing the steering wheel uh, aggressive. So the issue Brianna Wu is having right now. Oh, Sunday, this, none of this is great. Some great crime. You'll see in the next section. Don't worry. We're taking this slow. We're taking this really slow. So what we're looking at here is representative of a general attitude. Uh, non-binary people are grabbing the steering wheel. Gender, uh, uh gender non-conforming people are grabbing the steering wheel. Um, people who don't fit into an easy trans man, trans woman categorization, they're grabbing the steering wheel. They're taking control. And that's a bad thing. That is a bad thing. 
We need limits after all. Here's where it gets interesting. This is, uh, this is section two. Trans people have spent the last 30 years using our struggle as a, sorry, these people have spent the last 30 years using our struggle as a sort of legitimate front to push their ideology with no regard for our struggles. So this is a transgender equals transvestite. That's what TG equals TV sounds like. I don't know who put the fire there. I'm guessing Jenny. Well, that's how Virginia Pierce uh, used it in the seventies, but it's been an umbrella term for most of its life, especially since it became widespread. Transsexuals voice train because they want to fit in with other women. Transgenders don't voice train because what even is a female voice bro? Lo, lo, lo. And here we go. This is Brianna. In reply to Jenny Matrix. Let me double check. Let's make sure I'm not misrepresenting her. It's important. It's very important. It is. Okay. Look, I'm just speaking really honestly here, heterodox takes. Probably too honestly. Probably, as we'll see. But I now recognize leftist culture was always going to take us here. I said nothing about the BLM riots because I, don't, I didn't want the trouble. And I said nothing when tankies started taking over the party because I didn't want... I didn't want trouble. And I said nothing when they took over trans stuff and said you didn't need to have dysphoria to be trans. And I'm looking at where we are and it's just like my silence led us here. All of ours did. We did it with great intentions, but if we don't stop this bullshit, leftism will die. I think because I'm old enough to remember when we moved away from transsexual, I'm a bit more nuanced. You have to remember, daytime TV was obsessed with the sex in transsexual, so it was trying to water that down. I do think that as transgender doesn't mean anything clinically anymore, it makes sense to bring it back. Oh, and this is her in this trans medicalist uh, channel, slightly out of order, um, asking them in particular to come join in a dog pile on, uh, on Benny, who she just said, well, we saw that one. Let me pop that up again for people who are coming in a little bit late. Oh, it doesn't like that. Hang on. Let's open this in, uh, let's open this in paint again. This is Wu responding to Benny. not super hot, maybe just dress normally and don't present yourself as a transvestite.
So here she is uh, asking these people in particular to jump in on that. Stop projecting onto other people, immediately projects onto Gammy. I'm assuming this is commentary from the, uh, the Blue Sky conversation, that bitch is fucking crazy. I really think trans Twitter is as terrible as Gamergate, and it's the same on Blue Sky. I don't know. If you're not post-op, I think the worries are more legitimate. I personally would not care, but I don't think it's crazy. Of that one again. So we left off. I do think that as transgender doesn't mean anything clinically anymore, it makes sense to bring it back. The uh, the the sex element, the sex focus in transsexual. So, here. I don't know how to hype you up for the scholarship, to be honest. I think you should. You're a woman, you have the opportunity to move up in the world, and even if you don't believe it, you are viewed as a woman and treated as such by the person who recommended it to you. This nonsense about, I'm taking it from an actual woman, quote-unquote, is just brain worms and faux moral panic shit. Um, Brandon says, I get it, I really do. I was homeless when I transitioned, but I would not be able to do what I do now if I have done sex work. There's just a lot of life ahead. This is about sex work, incidentally. Um, so replying to Brianna Wu, but at the same time, y'all, is this really what you want to be defined as? No matter what you do in your career from here, this is why people are going to attack you. This is what, what people are going to attack you with. I mean, I've always worked in this kind of industry when I'm not a maid. My first real job was at Adam and Eve, and I was told straight up I was hired because it brought in chasers. Lovely. Going DEFCON 3 and Muslims. She's replying to this cactus person. I can't blow up my panel, but obviously I don't agree with her on transports. I don't know what that panel is, so I don't know what that means. Where I'm legitimately confused is what the kindest course of action is. There's almost no science on health outcomes. This is just an odd one. They exist in this kind of hopeless, being pierced female causes dysphoria, but being pierced male does not reduce it or make it better, and they're kind of in a semi-depressed gender limbo where presenting Andrew is the closest they can get to legit relief of mental strife. That's really interesting and sad. I think socially I have no issue respecting their pronouns. Like the nippleless top surgery fad seems like a massive red flag. Yeah. I hate them for pushing the pronoun bullshit so far. Fair, it's insanity. And here we go. Lol, Void Zanya. You remember Zanya? We talked to Zanya before. Started a shitstorm tonight. Doe came up. This is in a this is in a GC. I don't know what group chat this is, but apparently there's another group chat. Um, Doe came up, and I repeated your very plausible position that it pronouns are about a degradation fetish. This is Wu. This is Brianna. Demon Mama is in the group chat, and I didn't know they were dating LOL. Well, then the police came and it was all over. I mean, then I asked what she did for a living. That also didn't go over well. Not she, uh, they? Then apparently this is the only group chat with the good T-Stars. I don't know why we even included that. And then here. Doe didn't detransition because they still consider themselves trans, but agender and believe trans is an amorphous blob of a term that means a political statement against the societal concept of gender. 
But they have stopped taking hormones because they also believe hormones are a weapon of societal construct of gender assimilation and hormones should be a tool to be played with, not a medical usage because all gender should be abolished. It's not entirely true. No, that is not well. So, here's where we're at. Okay? Here's where we're at. The people who are running interference for Brianna are aware of this. Um, this stuff is not secret. This is like this may be this may be a private group chat, but there are people here. This is not like some exclusive crowd. I think even Chud Logic is in this group. This stuff is is just out there. It's brazen. And it would be one thing if this was somebody who was upfront about her positions. You'd have nothing more to say to her at that point. But uh, I disagree with you. I think your positions are ill-founded. In fact, I think some of them are motivated by prejudice and bigotry. And I think recommending that we drop these people for political reasons, I think that's ill-founded. I think that's not only ill-founded, I think it's going to have a perverse result. I think it's actually going to hurt the trans movement as a whole overall. That would be the discussion. The issue with this is that she's being disingenuous. While she is mocking non-binary people behind their backs and calling them unwell and, and and insisting on a return to medicalist definitions of being trans, which is what that is. She's saying this. Just wanted to put on the record that I unequivocally support non-binary people and anyone that says otherwise is lying for clout. Brianna Wu has just said in unequivocal terms that she doesn't support this. In fact, she sees Brianna Wu sees non-binary people as competing for control of the steering wheel. They need to be reined in. They're the problem. We need to return to saner metrics that insist upon sex binary defined ranges for trans identity. And in the process, in the she's she's going out of her way to utterly demean people who have been major positive uh, positive contributors to the space, other trans leaders. Wu didn't say the lotion comment. That's true. This is what's actually happening. Brianna Wu had a video. Let me see if I can find it quickly. Brianna Wu had a video, or a conversation rather, on Destiny's stream a few months ago, five months ago in fact, about the time when Keffels had stopped, uh, had stopped producing content. Um, I think this was after the interaction with Keemstar, she was burnt out, we learned later she was dealing with substance abuse issues, she went into rehab. During this time, 
Brianna Wu, uh, most famous at this at this point for going on about how Hogwarts Legacy, buying Hogwarts Legacy, Hogwarts Legacy is a test of character, and a lot of people are failing it right now. She had a conversation with him. This is a minute long. Uh, in which she outlined why she changed her tune on Destiny. Destiny, of course, wrote the Keffel's Manifesto. He defended Kiwi Farms. He's recently, uh, uh, in, in the last little bit, he's uh, donated about $10,000, I think exactly $10,000, um, to the Atlanta Police Department in support of Cop City um, to spite a black creator. I mean, the black creator, creator is empty signifier and he's a douchebag to be fair, but still, it's not them, it's not him particularly who's going to suffer from that. Um, and... And this, this is her explanation. Okay, remember, Hogwarts bu buying Hogwarts Legacy is a test of character. You're failing a test of character if you buy Hogwarts Legacy. Incidentally, this person has gone after Doe extensively um, on Medicalist and, and other grounds. But this is what she says. This is what I was going to say, and this is why, you know, I did have a change of heart on you. I mean, initially, look, dude, I'm just going to be honest. I, when I first saw your stuff, it was that second debate you had with Sam Cedar. Oh, and, geez. The and guzzling one? You said that I would be guzzling buckets of his c the guzzling buckets of cum. Yeah, nice. I'll tell you sometime about trying to explain this to Jenk, by the way. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, um, you know, the Caffles Manifesto and people started sending me your greatest hits on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. You look like an asshole. Yeah, I, of I'm course, sorry, yeah. but you, you did. You don't and have to apologize for it. But there, people do the same thing to me, right? And then I start actually watching your stuff. FD's not a bad guy. President Sunday has literally talked to you in respectful ways. He's not a bigot. He called... Uh, he joined in with the calling shark and uh, see such things. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any truck with that. I'll engage them decently if we do engage, but that's not cool. Oh, and I'm like, oh, there's actually a lot of shared values here on this, right? Like this is someone who is doing good work in the aggregate, right? And, you know, I really tried to, we didn't get off to a good start, but I see how we can do good work together, particularly getting people activated for elections. So mm -hmm. I, I just, I think that's really important to model for people, like putting small differences aside and trying to get done what you can. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I agree for sure. Yeah. Well, that's it, man. Just No explanation. There is no explanation. Except the obvious one. Uh, Keffels wasn't paying dividends. See, Brianna is rich. She's actually very well off. She comes from money you can't imagine. When she went into college, she was given $200,000 by her family, by her parents, to uh, create an animation studio. $200,000 is a gift. <laughs> um, she doesn't want money. She wants attention. She wants to be important. And if Keffels is giving up and, and is winding down and going a little bit private, she's not going to provide that. Um, and so, where do you go? No, oh, well, De we'll talk to Destiny. We'll be one of the good ones. We'll be one of the good ones. And, uh, and, and this is, this is her game. Everybody thinks she's her friend, and there's a reason for this. Because she's a chameleon, and she changes her positions based on who she's talking to. She will, she will be the best friend of a transphobe. She'll be the best friend of a racist. She'll be the best friend of somebody who is harassing somebody else actively. And, and she'll be the best friend and she'll reverse it when, when it stops, uh, when it stops benefiting her. This, this person is, this person is taking you for a ride. Here's the important part. She's not unique in this. Brianna Wu is an extremely common occurrence. There are a lot of people who are doing this. The Young Turks did this for a little while. In fact, I would be very surprised if her transmedicalist positions aren't directly a consequence of her um, recognizing that ultimately the most valuable, the most valuable stocks that she has are in the Young Turks, 
in the Young Turks and Destiny Sphere. Um, that's where she moved when Kefil started to drift. Now, Kefil is actively protecting her. I've, I've heard from other people that uh, Brianna Wu has been benefiting people in that sphere quite tremendously. Brianna Wu uh, has apparently a, a, a decent amount of control over a very large amount of PAC money. She can actually make a big difference politically, or at the very least, she can make a big difference in the lives of people who are engaging in this kind of thing. And I have no issue whatever with her using that money to do so as she sees fit, as, as the PAC she's fit provided, it's within the realm of the law. But what if she's using it in order to get immunity when she tries to gain stature within a community and advise it to act against its interests and is so and manages to sell a few people in some key positions to go along with it so that they cover for her and they hide it all of which it's it's just it's just in incredible like the the brazenness of this and then after all of this while all of this is going on somebody points this out and she says they they hate women like that's that's the explanation what what it, it, it's absolutely insane Keffels is reckless. I'm proud of her for beating Kiwi. Keffels didn't beat Kiwi, Kiwi Farms. I mean, credit to Keffels for dissing Kiwi Farms and drawing attention to it, but there's no such thing as beating Kiwi Farms. All of those people are also on Discord. They're also on YouTube. All that happened was that one location is gone. There are secret Discords somewhere where all this is still happening. There are non-secret Discords where all this is still happening. It doesn't matter. It, it's irrelevant. It's a, it, it's a good symbol, okay? It's a good thing that that thing is not like a thing anymore. But it doesn't matter in the long run. Doesn't matter. So. Let's review, okay? Just very quickly. Pull this up. This is where we started. Where to go? Oh, did I bury it? Damn it. Hang on. Everybody stay calm. This'll do. Oh, I lost the paint thing. Damn. Oh, unless I'm in the wrong... Oh, I think there we go. Okay. I accidentally switched uh, scenes. Here we go. This is where we started, okay? With, uh, with Branubu laughing at a, a former co-worker, essentially, um, who was fired, incidentally, uh, not fired, who, uh, when she left the Young Turks, uh, was complaining about uh, the Young Turks having a culture of transphobia that Cenk was extremely dismissive of, of particular trans people, specifically non-binary people. And here we have Branubu characterizing her as well if you're not super hot maybe just dress normally don't present yourself as a transvestite that's brianna Wu. and this is where we ended up Do came up on a repeated Zonya's very plausible position that it pronouns are about a degradation fetish. 
while Demon Mama was in the GC. She then asked what she did for a living. By the way, she asked what she did for a living. Why would she ask this? <laughs> Why would she ask this? Oh, do, do, do that's like a, that's like a self humiliation fetish, right? What, what is what does she uh, uh they do again? Pronoun bullshit is insanity. It's fair to hate them for it. I think socially I have no issue with respecting their pronouns. Like the nippleless top surgery fad seems like a massive red flag. Yeah. She's in agreement on that. Oh, here we go. This was the, uh, this was her anti-sex work take, yeah. We want to bring back... We want to bring back a, a sex-obsessed... Uh, transsexualism as the as the the more legitimate the more medically legitimate form of being transgender so in sum when Brianna Wu says Pull it up here again. When Branuwu says that she unequivocally supports non binary people and anyone that says otherwise is lying for clout, she's telling the truth. <laughs> At least in the latter part. Um, she is lying that she supports non-binary people for clout. And she's not just lying that she supports non-binary people. Uh, she's obscuring the fact. She's being incredibly two-faced about the fact that she is ridiculing a lot of you behind the scenes. And not only that, but she is in group chats with leaders in this community that she is leaking the contents of to a trans-medicalist chat that she then sends, that she encourages to come along with her to bully like an ex-worker of, of TYT, whatever you think about Benny, um, and and mock her appearance, call her a trans, call her, say that she looks like a transvestite. President Sunday, I'm old enough to know already that Wu is not to be trusted. Hopefully, this spreads to people that weren't around. Oh, I mean, she's she's been untrustworthy since uh, the inception of her quote-unquote political career. Let me give you an example, okay? This one caught my eye. This one caught my eye as particularly disingenuous. So Brianna Wu ran for Congress a little while ago. According to her, the uh, the campaign failed because she didn't try hard enough. Too lazy. But she ran for Congress. Brandavu Congress. I think I downloaded it actually. <clears throat> Here it is. Okay. This is an ad from Brandavu's congressional run four years ago, this is from twenty eighteen. This one's kind of special. Here we go. Well, we'll get the audio back up. Hi, I'm Brianna Wu, and I'm running to be your Congresswoman right here in Massachusetts District 8. 2020 is an exciting year for Democrats. We get to decide the future of our country. I was adopted, happy to be taken in by what I thought was a loving family. But then, when I came out as queer, 
They disowned me. Suddenly, I found myself homeless. I know what it's like to struggle to make ends meet, to go without health care, to go without food, to survive. I had to believe in myself. In 2010, I founded my own software development studio right here in Massachusetts. We gave good jobs to people that weren't being given a fair shake. Actually, people have complained about her, her as an employer after the fact. Oh, we, uh, hang on, give it a sec. We'll come back. It'll come back. Hang on. We're just waiting for the, uh, the buffering to stop. Okay, everyone stay calm. I found them all. They're dead now. So that's that one. There's another one I want you to see. Here we go. This is, this, we'll, we'll, you'll see where I'm going with this. Hi, I'm Brianna Wu, and I'm running to be your Congresswoman right here in Massachusetts District 8. 2020 is an exciting year for Democrats. We get to decide the future of our country. Are we going to settle for the status quo? This is the 2020 ad. Or are we going to be bold and make a better America for all of us? I grew up in the poorest state in America, Mississippi. Sorry, not, it's not from, it's not from, uh, it's not from 2010, it's from 2019. I grew up in the poorest state in America, Mississippi. I saw communities ravaged with no health care, no opportunity, and the violence of organized hatred. I was adopted, happy- Did you hear this? Listen to this. This is an important part. I saw communities ravaged. I grew up in the poorest state in America, Mississippi. Communities ravaged with no health care, no opportunity, and the violence of or violence of organized hatred. Do you know what Brianna Wu did immediately after uh, going to college and, and, and after growing up, seeing poverty and inequality and the violence of organized hatred? She volunteered for Trent Lott. In college, you volunteered for Senator Trent Lott, a Republican. Not just a Republican, by the way. Not just a Republican. A segregationist Republican. Who in 2002 was called to resign for saying that the U.S. would have been a better place if the then segregationist Strom Thurmond 
had been elected president in 1948. Brianna left that part out. She didn't grow out of it. She left that part out. Yeah, the ad is terrible. So, in short, Brando was kind of uh, kind of a psycho. Um, she she smiles at you as she stabs you in the back, and she has an escape hatch that the communities she is throwing under the bus do not have. Brandon's goal is to be famous. That's why she's putting herself into embarrassing engagements on Tim Pool, despite having no capacity, no, no, having done no preparation, being completely blindsided on every question, being able to substantiate nothing and respond to nothing. Um, that's why she is pretending to be the friends of Keffels while also being the friend of Destiny. That's why she's pretending to be uh, an advocate for the trans community while actively promoting people who are against them. Um, that's why she's whitewashing people like Destiny and Counterpoints, despite them having pretty overtly transmedicalist, if not outright, uh, transphobic positions. Um, in the case of Counterpoints, we have the, the in impressive assertion on the, uh, on the, on the addition to that, that he considers, uh, for example, if he were to, he would not date a black woman on the grounds that as a consequence of her being black, that's a red flag. She probably has a bad relationship with her parents. Destiny, of course, just donated $10,000 to Cop City. Uh, by the way, if you want to know how bad that actually is, look up the Red Dog Unit. Look up, look up how that police department operates. So, in short... Brianna Wu... is not just a snake who is actively trying to get herself into a position of influence to hurt members of the trans community in order to position herself as some kind of uh, a famous political leader, despite the fact that she has no strategic history whatsoever to justify this, no political success in her background, um, except for managing to find her way into the possession of enough money to fail and not face the consequences for it. Um, not only is she, is she, uh, lying about, about who she actually stands for, who she actually supports. She clearly does not support non-binary people. She clearly thinks they're ridiculous. She clearly thinks they're disgusting. She's gone out of her way to ridicule non-binary people, even ones that she has worked with or have a, have a connection to, um, current employers in the grossest terms, referring to them as, as looking like transvestites referring to them as ill, agreeing with people who characterize them as ill. She regards them as antagonists. They, they want control of the wheel. They need to have the, we need to take the steering wheel away from them. They're just a meaningless minority. They're mostly cis people anyways. So, and people are letting her slide with this. People people who should know better. People who also pretend to represent the, the trans community online. People who also represent uh, progressive politics. They're letting her go with this because they've been seduced by her promises of mainstream media access. So you've been thrown under the bus. You've been thrown under the bus by people in Keffel's community. By Ke Keffel's knows about this. I pointed this out to her directly. The uh, the screenshots from tonight were new. Um, but she's jumped to Wu's defense. She's jumped to Wu's defense against any. Is even misrepresented any, uh, not any. Uh, she's jumped to Wu's defense against Benny. Um, even as uh, e even accusing Benny of quote unquote transvestigating Wu. 
speculating if she's trans or not. She did no such thing, actually. In fact, what she did say was that she doesn't care. It doesn't matter. Because somebody in her chat asked. Now, she said something very stupid afterwards, which is par for the course for Benny. She said that uh, even if Wu is trans, she's not welcome to the trans community, which is, of course, absurd. The trans community is trans people. If you're trans, you are part of the trans community. It's really just a demographic. It's not a, it's not a social club. But that works in both ways. That works in both ways. And you cannot go after Benny for saying that when you are in bed with somebody who is actively advocating uh, for a subset of trans people to be excluded, to not be represented. When you're interfering with productive conversations in which people are trying to explain to people who are not familiar with these terms that no, no, people with neo-pronouns or non-binary people, they don't have a degradation fetish. They're doing something a little bit more intelligent and they're doing something a little bit more uh, significant and, and more significant to their dignity than, than just having a fetish. They're not getting off on this. In short, Brianna Wu is a test of character and a lot of people are failing right now. And we need to do better because this is not going to age well. This stuff was going to come out someday from someone. It's just a question of when. And it's a question of if it's going to come out uh, when the community is already broken apart. Because here's what happens. Uh, you, don't, you don't suddenly start winning elections because you cast out large members of your community as freaks. Uh, what actually happens is you turn your community against each other. The amount of people in your community now shrinks. And it continues to shrink. Because that doesn't work. You need, to, you need to keep on pairing off the weirdos until you're in a situation where if we adopted your attitude, we wouldn't even have had gay marriage by now. That was the language back then, by the way. Don't, don't spook them too much. Don't push too hard. And then what will happen is uh, media figures who represent these communities, uh, they're not going to see any more money in it. They already aren't. You've seen this happen already. The Young Turks were ahead of the current on that. Um, they're not going to see any more money in it. Uh, we don't want to represent this community. They hold us to standards. There's a lot of them that are deeply unpleasant to deal with. There are a lot of very, very stressful people with an unpleasant manner. Screw this. Screw this. I don't owe them anything. Uh, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do what everybody else is doing. Because I can see where the political winds are turning. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to join in, uh, validating people who are fear-mongering about birthing people discourse or things like that. They're trying to erase women. Because that's what that transmedicalist stance is. It's, it's an essentially eugenic principle. Um, it's an essentially eugenic principle that insists that in order to be valid, you have to be processed by a medical system. You have to be carved up in particular kinds of ways. You have to have particular kinds of treatments or else you don't count. That's not the same as saying that people who need gender-affirming surgeries or care or hormone therapy should be provided this. This is saying that they must be or else they don't count. They must be processed and registered by a medical system. A medical establishment that, by the way, when you're looking at things like the SOC, when you're looking at things like WPATH, they're not, what they're trying to do is compromise with the fact that the medical system is slowly awakening to the actual complexities of the situations facing trans people and, and trying to balance that with the fact that the principles informing their approach is fundamentally eugenic in its history. There's a lot of eugenic language, there's a lot of eugenic assumptions in the way in which trans people have been treated in, in the last hundred years. And we're slowly moving away from that, but... Is Vosh medicalist by proxy? I don't think Vosh is aware of any of this. My honest opinion is that... Uh, Vosh has been hands-off with the Reddit. He's probably been mostly hands-off with Wu. I don't think he's paid attention to this. I think he saw, oh, there's somebody from the Young Turks who's willing to give me a platform, um, maybe even access to the White House, like something something high scale, and he took it, and power to him for doing so. I think the people who do know about this and who are covering for this because they see dollar signs or they see a political opportunity in a very cynical fashion, I think those are some of the people working for Vosh and some of the people working for Keffels, and certainly Keffels as well. So... No, Vosh isn't transmed. Vosh, um, Vosh has actually been uh, extraordinarily uh, 
stalwart in his in his support for that community for non-binary people etc I hope he remains that way I really do um, my impression of him is that he's actually a very very decent person if a little if a little unwise in who he puts in charge of his stuff but that's my opinion Vosh's Reddit is a very different thing from him that's true But yeah, Brianna Wu, she's not your ally. How you tell real friends is that they are willing to become the real enemies of people who want to hurt you. People who are everyone's friend are out for themselves. Yeah, Vosh is a gender abolitionist, that's correct. So here's, here's my take on this. Use Brianna Wu's money. You'd be stupid not to. If you can manage to do that without compromising on your principles, without betraying the people you represent, you built your platform representing, good, great. There is, there is no, there's no medal awarded for being pure if you lose. But the course Brianna is offering is not one where you win. The course Brianna is offering is one where you fail, but she gets to become famous because she's positioned herself as the main character. That is not the same thing. As we've seen by the comments tonight, she despises a large number of you. She is perfectly willing to badmouth you to, to transmedicalist discords um, that she thinks, or, or uh, to chat groups that she thinks are, are just absolutely secret. Because who, who on earth could not fall for Brianna Wu's charm? Um, I think we've seen tonight that far from being supportive of non-binary people, Brianna Wu has contempt for them at best. And is being extremely disingenuous when she says that what the 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 strategies that she advocates for are for everyone's benefit? No. No, she doesn't care about you. So that's that. That's that. Also, if everyone else is guilty by association, so is Vosh. I'm not guilting people by association. I have no problem with people associating with Brianna Wu. What I have a problem with is people hiding this and being party to her conning their audiences. That's what I have a problem with. That's what I have a problem with. I don't think, I don't, like, th think of who you're throwing under the bus here by, by, by not calling this out, by not putting a stop to this. Um, a whole ton of people in Demon Mama's community, in Doe's community, just out. A whole ton of people in their community is just out. Hell, uh, Progressive Victory has a non-binary person on their staff. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And this will, be, this will be an embarrassment later on. I'll tell you why this hasn't been an issue so far. Because Brianna Wu herself, up to this point, is not important. Nobody cares enough to, 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 to challenge her on this stuff, because she's irrelevant. The thing that matters about her is her money. She's trying to position herself, however, using that money in order to guide strategy. Strategy that will leave a whole bunch of people out to dry. Strategy that is fundamentally right-wing in terms of its outcomes. It, fun it, it results only in turning inward, silencing members of your own community, and leaving it there, hoping, hoping to God that somehow, if you make yourself as, as, uh, as aesthetically palatable to people who are utterly transphobic and want them purged from the population as possible, um, that somehow you will win, that somehow this will create a better presence for the... It, it's silly. It's silly and naive. Thank you, and I have a chance for the $10. People can be friends with terrible people without knowing they are terrible people. Keep in mind Vosh was positively disposed to RGR prior to her going off uh, on... Yeah, yeah, to going off her rocker. Yeah, that's true. And honestly, I think Brianna should be given her, 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 her opportunity to defend herself and to defend what she said. What's unforgivable, what Brianna has done, is that she has lied to you. She's told you. She, she supports non-binary people unequivocally. But when she thinks you're not looking, she treats you like garbage. She mocks you. She treats you like you're diseased.
So that's that. Have a good night, everyone.